Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome to the YouTube channel that makes your PlayStation spin with health but does nothing for regular human beings. Who is Lara Croft? What is she? Meow, 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 scale bow. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. What is it that's got four buttons and sits comfortably in the hand? These are a few of the things that you won't find out during the course of this video. Welcome to Kiai Mathy's YouTube channel. Jelly Spoons to Kai Mathy's YouTube channel for this month's Retro Roundup where we embark on a nostalgic journey through the timeless classic video games that once graced the shelves of video game stores of eras long past. And 2014! Without further ado, let's dive into the golden age of gaming. So pour yourself a brew, ensure that you're subscribed to the channel and join us as we celebrate our very first 40th anniversary of the year. <laughs> Punch Out, marking the beginning of a beloved boxing video game series developed by Nintendo. This arcade classic quickly rose to prominence, securing its place as that year's most successful arcade game in the United States. Its triumph led to the creation of a sequel, Super Punch Out, an offshoot entitled Arm Wrestling, and adaptations for home consoles, including the NES, with a version initially titled Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and later Super Punch Out for the SNES. The game was notable for its introduction of several iconic characters that would become staples in the series, including Glass Joe, Preston Hurricane, Bald Bull, and Mr. Sandman. Additionally, Punch Out marked the first Nintendo project for Koji Kondo, who would later gain fame for his musical contributions to Super Mario and the Legend of Zelda franchises. <laughs> Well now, next on the list, February 1994, a month that saw Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego debut on Fox TV, a TV series that was birthed after the success of the educational mystery video game series, don't you know? Well now you do. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 3, a platform game created and released by Sega for the Genesis slash Mega Drive console. Continuing the traditions of its predecessor, the game features side-scrolling levels where players collect rings and vanquish foes. The storyline follows Sonic and Tails as they endeavour to secure the Chaos Emeralds aiming to thwart Dr. Robotnik's plans to relaunch his space station, the Death Egg. Launched in February in North America in Europe and later in May in Japan, Sonic 3 built upon the success of its predecessor, earning praise from critics for its advancements. Sonic 3, alongside Sonic and Knuckles, achieved sales of 4 million copies globally, don't you know? ranking them amongst the Genesis slash Mega Drive's top sellers. These games have been featured in various compilations by Sega and Sonic over the years. Sonic 3 was being developed alongside Sonic and Knuckles, and the two were intended to be one game. However, due to time pressures and the high cost of cartridges, the project were cut in two. The unique feature of Sonic 3 is the ability to connect it with the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge through an adapter, merging into the expanded game Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The game's music saw contributions from King of Pop, Michael Jackson, who ultimately left the project without credit. His compositions were modified for some of the game's later versions, though. Derby Stallion 2, often abbreviated as Derby Stall in Japan, is a successful blend of horse racing and business simulation video game series. Initially developed by ASCII, or is that ASC2? We'll never know. By 1999, the series had achieved remarkable sales, reaching 6 million copies within Japan. In the Derby Stallion games, players aim to attain the prestigious G1 Racer title. This objective requires players to breed and train a superior lineup of horses, maximising their chances of victory in various races scheduled throughout the year by the fictional Sonobu Racing Association. 
The game not only focuses on racing, but also incorporates elements of business management, farming simulations and role play as players navigate between competitions, managing their stables and making strategic decisions to lead their team to success. Um, um, something wrong with TV, lad? That's not going to get them at home, is it? Commenting, liking and subscribing. Ah, yes. Um, well, it turns out that Derby Stallion 2 is actually quite a hard game to do research on. We're not even entirely sure we're using the correct box art. If you need something to fill the empty space, I've got just the thing! Welcome to Badger Watch, the ultimate series for wildlife enthusiasts and badger lovers. Did you know that badgers are capable of building extensive underground homes called sets? I beg your pardon. I think we'll just move on to February 1999 if it's all the same to you, Keith. But before we do, I just want to remind all of you watching at home, if you're not subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. It costs nothing and means so much to us here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker. We've been overwhelmed by the surge in subscribers that we've seen since the start of the year, and we are well on our way to reaching our first landmark of 500 subscribers. So thank you to all of you, and indeed, welcome. Right, back to video games, lad. February 1999. Final Fantasy VIII, a role-playing video game created and released by Square, marking the eighth primary entry in the Final Fantasy franchise. This instalment is set in a fictional world with scientific undertones and follows the journey of Squall Lionheart and his group of young mercenaries. They find themselves embroiled in a war initiated by a sorceress who has taken control of a dominant military nation. As they embark on their mission to defeat the sorceress and unravel the forces behind her, Squall faces challenges of his leadership role and develops a romantic relationship with fellow mercenary Rinoa Hartley. As of 2013, Final Fantasy VIII is the first and only Final Fantasy game where the playable character does not equip any armour. The development of Final Fantasy VIII started in 1997, coinciding with English adaptation of Final Fantasy VII. This game continues the series' evolution by utilising 3D graphics and pre-rendered backgrounds introduced in its predecessor. It also breaks new grounds by featuring characters with realistic proportions, incorporating songs with vocals as its theme, and eliminating the traditional magic point system for casting spells. The PC version includes the minigame Chocobo World. Previously, this was only available with the Japanese PlayStation X version through a pocket station. Sifa and Zell, two important characters in Final Fantasy VIII, were renamed to Sifa and Zen respectively in the German version, probably because the original names are common German surnames and we didn't really want to offend anyone, do we? Disc 3 of the Windows version US release has a hidden audio track. It contains the song Eyes on Me, sung by Fei Wong. This song was released in Japan as a CD single and was part of the original soundtrack, don't you know? Did you know, though, that the original PlayStation version does actually include the Chocobo World minigame? It's just you need a pocket station enabled to access it. There are actually quite a few items that you need the pocket station to be able to access and the only way to do that in the uh, western world was to import a pocket station from Japan. Final Fantasy VIII received acclaim from critics and achieved significant commercial success, don't you know? It earned 151 million on its day of release in Japan and surpassed 50 million sales within the first 13 weeks in North America, becoming the fastest selling game in the series until the release of Final Fantasy XIII. A Windows version came out in the year 2000, including a Chocobo World mini-game, and the game saw a digital re-release as a PlayStation 1 classic on the PlayStation Store in 2009 for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Portable, later becoming available for the PlayStation Vita in 2012, and on Steam in 2013. By August of 2019, it had sold over 9.6 million copies globally, and in September of 2019, a remastered edition was launched for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Windows and Xbox One, followed by a release for Android and iOS in March of 2021. Oh, f*** me, that was a lot for... Right, I best get a brew going. Over to you, Pat. Not only have we already done a 20th anniversary retrospective review on Final Fantasy VIII, which you can watch at your leisure, link in the description down below, but did you know that the PlayStation 1 version of Final Fantasy VIII appears in the book A Thousand and One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by Tony Mott, the phenomenal editor 
of Edge magazine. Turn complete. Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, a 4X strategy game often hailed as the spiritual successor to the acclaimed Civilization series. Set against the backdrop of the 22nd century within a sci-fi rendition, a narrative unfolds on Turon, or planet, within the Alpha Centauri star system, where seven distinct ideological factions vie for dominance. As these human settlers strive to establish their foothold, they encounter an unexpected challenge, the burgeoning consciousness of the planet itself. Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri appears in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by Torinit Mott, the general editor of Edge magazine. And because of that, it gets this month's recommendation for Mr. B to have a bash. Now, if you don't know who Mr. B is, check him out over on his own YouTube channel. And if you're tired of learning about video games, why not have a bash at learning the ukulele? If I'd have known just for one second, you'd be back to bother me. Now, this game with brainchild of Sid Meier and Brian Reynolds, both pivotal figures in development of the Civilization franchise, who ventured to establish Fraxis Games with Jeff Briggs after departing MicroProse. Released alongside its expansion, Sid Meier's Alien Crossfire, Alpha Centauri were later adapted for classic Mac OS by Aspire Media and for Linux by Loki Software in subsequent years. Alpha Centauri enhances the Civilization 2 engine with features such as simultaneous multiplayer gameplay, social engineering mechanics, a dynamic climate system, customizable units, indigenous alien life forms, expanded diplomatic and espionage activities, multiple victory conditions, and increased options for modification. The Alien Crossfire expansion broadened the game's universe with five additional human factions and two alien factions alongside new technologies, facilities, secret projects, unit capabilities and other paths to victory, don't you know? Critics lauded the game, drawing favourable comparisons to Civilization 2 and commending its deep science fiction storyline, which echoes the themes of legendary authors like Stanley Kubrick, Frank Herbert, Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov. They also praised the in-game narrative, voice acting, the flexibility Production to create complete. custom units and the extensive technology tree. Alpha Centauri received numerous accolades including Best Game of the Year and Best Strategy Game of the Year for its innovative gameplay and strategic depth. Turn complete. If you can discover a better way of life than others, turn complete. February 2004, a month that sadly saw the passing of Castle Wolfenstein creator Silas Warner and Electronic Arts consolidated, rolling most of Maxis and all of Origin systems into its Redwood Shore HQ. We're young, dumb and full of kid money that we would save up to buy the following. Jet Li, Rise to Honor. And we're going to give Pixel Paul a shout out here for putting this game on my radar. An action adventure game crafted by Foster City Studios, currently known as San Mateo Studios, and launched by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 2. The game stands out for incorporating the appearance, voice and motion capture performance of martial arts superstar Jet Li, alongside martial arts choreographer Corey Yun. One at promo posters has Jet Li walking down a little alley in Chinatown in his costume. This picture is not taken on a set. This is a real street in San Francisco's Chinatown, the old Chinatown lane between Clay Street and Washington Street. However, they airbrushed out all of the English lettered names. Remarkably, it is the solo project completely developed by San Mateo Studios, situated within the premises of Sony Computer Entertainment's headquarters, a studio primarily engaged in support roles. Wraith Unleashed. Unleashed, combining strategic gameplay and elements of both turn-based and real-time action, drawing inspiration from classic game Archeon The Light and the Dark, set within an asteroid belt, the remnants of a shattered world, the game unfolds as gods from the four elemental realms, water, fire, earth and wind, engage in fierce conflict. Each deity seeks to dominate and secure the throne of Gaia, representing four different factions, Light Order, Light Chaos, Dark Order and Dark Chaos. 
These reign from the altruistic to the malevolent, commanding legions of mysterious creatures. Players have the opportunity to lead any of these divine armies to triumph across four campaign missions. The campaign mode is structured around moving units across a hexagonal tile board, with each hexagon symbolising different types of terrain. Strategic goals often include capturing enemy temples or vanquishing key adversaries. Encounters between opposing forces on the same hex lead to battles, which are fought in expansive arenas, blending real-time strategy with action-packed combat. Players can control their warrior directly, engaging in intense arcade-style fights against their foes. So I'm, I'm guessing this gets the Mr. B recommendation as well. I will survive. Well, maybe. But if it gets the Mr. B recommendation, then it certainly gets the Engage recommendation for its arcade style fights. Teal. Right. Somebody needs to tell me when he's here, because I was about to blame Keith for the lack of best in this video. As we step into February 2014, a month that saw Double Helix Games get acquired by Amazon.com and Irrational Games, creators of the Bioshock series, shut down. The games that we're about to explore may not immediately strike you as retro, yet it may come as a surprise that they are celebrating their 10th anniversary. Don't take too many. If you need me, I'll be in the wine cellar. Jazz Punk, an adventure game crafted by Necrophone Games and distributed by Adult Swim Games. It made its debut on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X and Linux. Later, a director's cut version was released by Necrophone Games for the PlayStation 4 in September of 2016, with a version for the PC platform following in June 2017. As a single-player first-person adventure, Jazz Punk emphasises exploration and humour rather than focusing on puzzles. Players are tasked with their primary mission in each level, but have the liberty to roam the game's environments at leisure. This world is filled with numerous interactive NPCs, each offering their own unique action or joke. The game is enriched with mini-games that are woven into storyline, including mini-golf, a frogger homage, and a twist on Duck Hunt, where players toss bread slices at a cardboard duck using a toast. Additionally, Jazz Punk includes a distinct mini-game called Wedding Quake, renamed Wedding Cake, where players engage in a Quake-style deathmatch using wedding-themed armaments such as wedding cakes, roses, and a champagne cork to defeat AI opponents. Come back when you've got the MacGuffin. If I don't spoil the mood in here, I can fill my pockets too. Thief, a stealth video game crafted by Eidos Montreal and launched by Square Enix for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Windows, Xbox 360 and Xbox One platforms. Feral Interactive later introduced the game for Mac OS X users in November of 2015. Serving as a reboot, Thief breathes new life into the beloved Thief series, marking its fourth entry. Initially revealed in 2009 as Thief 4, it was subsequently announced in 2013 that the game would serve as a fresh start for the franchise. Set against the backdrop of The City, a world infused with dark fantasy and inspired by Victorian, Gothic, Gaslight fantasy and steampunk themes, the game casts players as Garrett, a skilled thief on a quest to pilfer from the affluent. The game presents a variety of approaches for navigating levels, allowing players to choose between the direct aggressive path employing knives and takedowns to neutralise or eliminate foes, or a subtle, non-lethal route that emphasises avoiding detection by minimising interaction with characters and the surroundings. Each location in the game offers multiple branching paths, giving players the freedom to select their preferred route to the objective. Upon its release, Thief was met with mixed reviews from critics. Whilst its stealth mechanics and potential for multiple playthroughs were commended, the game's level design and narrative were subject to criticism. Personally, I don't actually mind the Thief reboot, but what about you at home? Let us know what you thought of the games that we've covered today and what you thought of the video as a whole in the comment section down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, remember to rectify that. 
I mean, the button is right there. Click that like button, share this video out with your retro gaming chums, and of course, if you watch to the end of the video, thank you. I'm sure we could go on talking all day, if only I could think of something to say. But before we sign off, we've had a comment from a viewer who makes a very interesting suggestion, but in spite of that, we will be back next week. Who says YouTube's killing conversation? It's that kind of conversation that's killing YouTube. Anyway, that brings us to the end, except for the hangover question, which is, what was I doing dancing naked in the fountain in Trafalgar Square last night? Answers please to my solicitor, Rose Harbour, Gross Harbour, Landlast and Gladys. Cheerio, see you next time.